What's up guys and welcome to my review of Prey, the Predator prequel movie. So the way I'll structure this review is, I'll start off with a non-spoiler kind of general overview of the movie and its story, as well as my overall thoughts on it, having just watched it for the first time today, and then we'll get into the spoilers later on. The best way I can sum up this movie is that I would say, on the whole, for what it is, just on its own, I would say it is a fairly decent film, but coming from the perspective of a really hardcore Predator fan, I'd say it's okay, but does have some glaring issues. There are some good parts to the movie, but also bad parts. I would say for everything that happened that I liked, there would be another thing that I didn't like. It's not the worst Predator movie, but definitely not the best either. From what I've seen, pretty much almost every review and impression seem to be overwhelmingly positive, with most saying it's the best sequel, and some even going as far as to say it even surpasses the original, and the whole way through I was just thinking, are we watching the same film? It's nowhere near as good as Predator 1, but it is better than The Predator, the last film. I'd say that my initial reaction after literally having just finished watching it, I wasn't very happy with it. It was the ending especially that I really did not care for, but then after thinking about it for a few hours, I'd say I liked the film a bit and that it's okay, but the last few parts of the film do drag it down a lot. It starts off okay, and it does take the time to establish the main character, which is something I like, and also does do a good job of that initial build-up of the Predator, and it continues that throughout the earlier parts of the film, until we get to around the halfway mark, and then it seems to take all of that tension they built up to, and then they just throw it all away, especially with the Predator, who just makes some of the stupidest decisions, and after they've established how deadly and cunning he is, he then proceeds to lose about half of his IQ points. I also thought they showed the Predator a bit too much as well, and most of the sequences were done through some pretty cheap looking CGI. I thought there were some bits that we didn't really need to see, and it would have been better if they'd not shown it. Like at the start, it was cool when we see his ship coming, as it's obscured by cloud cover and it looks like a storm, so it's kind of more like it's hinted at. But then we see it, the ship leave and it just looks like a low budget CGI spaceship. And as well as whenever we see the Predator cloaked, it looks pretty ropey as well. Like we've seen the cloaking being done with better CGI as far back as AVP 1 in 2004. And then there's a few sequences where he fights animals, which was cool to see, as we've never seen a predator fight earth animals before. He fights a wolf, and a snake, and the bear, which was spoiled in the trailer. But in the trailer, they didn't actually show the whole thing, and it's extended here, which I was happy about. It was cool, and I did like the visual aspect of it, and what was happening on screen. But at the same time, I was very aware of the fact that I was looking at cheap CGI, and it took me straight back out of the immersion. After most of those bits, I was thinking to myself, that was cool, but it did look a bit naff. Apart from the CGI though, it is a good looking film, with stuff like the lighting and camera angles being decent enough, and it does have a really beautiful setting with all the forests, and there's a lot of nice overhead drone footage of the environment as well. It's a very pretty and picturesque location they filmed it in. Something a lot of fans were concerned about was that the film was going to try and push a modern political agenda within a historical setting, due to the filmmakers using terminology such as gender norms during the film's initial announcement, and alienating a lot of people out of the gate, making them think Naru would be a Mary Sue. I think this was a really unwise and out of touch way for the studio to describe the film so early on, as ordinary people don't want the filmmakers political views interlaced within their entertainment, they just want to sit back and have a good time. After having now seen the film, would I say the final product come off like that? Well, there was this part where she fights a male tribe member and would have won if his friend didn't help him, and later she fights off and stabs like five of the fur trappers at once, and then the ending when she fights the predator. So I would say maybe a bit. 
I did think Naru was a bit OP and had thick plot armour, but then again, she is the main character after all, so I guess it's down to your own interpretation. Something else people had an issue with was how the Native Americans in the 1700s are speaking English and not their native language, but obviously in universe they are speaking their own language, it's just English for us, the audience. I never really understood that criticism, it doesn't take a lot of working out to know that's what's happening. Speaking of the human characters, this isn't like other Predator films where we have a team of heroes. The only real characterisation is done with Naru and her brother, kind of, but other than that, no one else really felt fleshed out at all and were either background characters or were only there to be killed off by the Predator. Naru was okay I guess, but I didn't really care about the others. I'd say my favourite character was actually the dog, and there were a couple of moments where I actually was worried he might get killed, but I'm happy to say he lives. When it comes to the predator of this movie, I would say I like how he is depicted as not being quite as advanced as he's from 300 years earlier, and I do like his overall design and think he was really cool. I also liked how his vision looks more like it did in the first two movies. He has a lot of gadgets and weapons, some are new and others are returning weapons we've seen before, and they did a good job of making them look like earlier versions of them. My favourite weapon of his had to be the Spear Launcher, which is the replacement for the Plasma Caster. It shoots guided projectiles and uses his biomass targeting laser. It starts off as the triangle, but then each dot splits apart to show him targeting different body parts. He also has wrist blades, a shield, a combi stick that can separate into two halves, proximity mines, and a cutting tool that snaps around things, kind of like those bracelets for kids where you slap it against your wrist and it curls around. So that'll do it for the non-spoiler section of the review, now we'll be proceeding into spoiler territory, so now's your chance to leave if you don't want spoilers. So I'd say while the movie is paced well and initially built the tension effectively, it then just really drops the ball around halfway through when the predator was fully revealed. The best part of the movie was the middle part, like when he fights the bear, that was cool, and that was extended from the trailer where it just looked like he killed it by surprise from behind, but in the actual film we see the whole fight, which I enjoyed despite it being obvious CGI. Something funny actually was that in my review of The Predator, I mentioned that bit where the blood spills on the fugitive while he's cloaked, and I said that would have been a cool gag if it was done in a better film and different context, and it looks like we actually got that in this film, so I wonder if they saw that part from the last film and thought the same thing I did. I also thought that bit where she gets stuck in that sinking mud was a cool idea, but the whole time I knew there was absolutely no chance she was ever in any actual danger. The feral predator also just acted really stupidly, and would place himself out in the open, leaving himself open to attack, like that part where he shoots that Native American with the spears, and the rest of them are right there staring at his body, and then the predator just walks up to him and pulls the spears back out. And then the part with the fur trappers, he just breaks cover and wanders around in the open and is stepping on bear traps and stuff, when in the other films it's established that predators can see traps, but here he just wades in aimlessly into situations where all his enemies have a clear shot at him. The predators are meant to be stealthy, they wouldn't do that, or if they did, they retreat, but here he acts like a tank and soaks up loads of damage and doesn't seem to care if he gets hit a bunch of times. It actually reminded me of the assassin predator in The Predator when they fought him at the end, which is also what the end fight in this reminded me of too. I also didn't like the Predator's face design at all, his eyes were really weird looking and he looked like a supermarket brand berserker. It was like they took the Super Predator forehead and put the Scar Predator's mandibles on it, but the Predator face in this film, I really didn't like it, and don't feel there was really any need to do the whole this is a new Predator species thing, as it was already done better in Predators, and actually was relevant to that film's story, where here there didn't seem to be any point to it. 
Also, it looks like, yet again, we have another predator who just gets beaten by the human, and there isn't even any luck involved this time. She straight up just fights him and wins, and it was stupid where it had that bit where she pulls off one of his mandibles and stabs him with it, and when she ties the rope around him and can pull him over into the quick mood, like, how would she be strong enough to do that? And then she makes him cut off his own arm. So she actually defeats the Predator way harder than Dutch or anyone else has, and with no help either. I think Royce defeating Berserker in Predators was the limit of believability for me when it comes to a human defeating a Predator, but even then, he had help. This fight was like that one times 100. I even did a community post the other day asking what people wanted to see in the new movie, and pretty much every other comment people left said they wanted the feral predator to win, or at least survive. But the predator always dies in the films, we're getting to the point where we have to ask, are they even the predators anymore after they keep dying every time they come to earth? And then the bit at the end that I thought was so stupid was how he shoots the spear, because she put the mask there, it circles back around and he shoots himself in the head. Like, how much of an extreme coincidence is that, how she knew he'd do that and that that had happened? It was that end fight that really disappointed me about the film and dragged down my rating of it a lot. I thought it was so stupid and it reminded me a lot of the ending in Jurassic World Dominion where the T-Rex pushes the Giganotosaurus onto the Therizinosaurus's claws, it was on that same level. Then at the end when she chucks the Predator's head down on the floor and they look at the pistol and it is the same pistol from Predator 2, so I guess that comic with the pirates is confirmed not canon now. So in closing, I feel that it was a decent movie, but that the final act ruined it for me. I do think the film's overhyped and a bit overrated with just how positive the reaction from most people is. Part of me thinks that may be down to just how shitty the last film really was, and people are just so grateful that it wasn't as bad as that. Though I have only watched it once, so maybe after a second viewing it might grow on me more with time, I have to wait and see. I'd say that I thought it was alright as a film, and I enjoyed it probably about the same as AVP 1, so I think it was definitely better than The Predator and AVP Requiem, but not as good as Predator 2 or Predators, and nowhere near as good as Predator 1. I give Prey a score of 6 out of 10. Thanks for watching the video, and remember to give it a thumbs up if you liked it, and subscribe if you aren't already, and I'll see you in the next video.